Farmers today are facing rising costs, volatile markets, and extreme weather. The Better Way to Farm podcast digs into strategies to help you take control of farm inputs and maximize profit so your farm can thrive for generations. Remember to take advantage of our free resources at abetterwaytofarm.com. Now, from America's heartland, here's your host. Hey guys, Rod here at A Better Way to Farm, where we increase yields and improve profits. You know, it's interesting, we've already started our Fundamentals of Agronomy season, and it's just astounding to see the amount of interest that we've had. And I've had the opportunity to interact with a lot of growers who've been working with us for a year, five years, 10 years, a long time. Have a lot of guys who've never had anything to do with us at all until now, and they're just coming through the program for the first time. But here's what they all have in common. They were looking. They were really looking for a better way. Guys, we sat here at the end of 2024, getting ready to start 2025, and I'm watching all of this unfold. And I know that we're talking to bankers who are nervous. We're talking to growers who are uncomfortable. We're talking to people who have talked about the amount of equity that has been lost over the course of the last two years. And I am astounded by the number of people who lost a lot of equity in 2023 and came back and did exactly the same thing in 2024, somehow hoping that it was going to be different. And we're getting to launch off into 2025 here. And here's my question. What are you going to do different? What changes are you going to make? Because the bottom line is, guys, hope is not a method and hope is not a plan. Oh, I remain hopeful and I remain optimistic. And I believe that we'll make it through this situation and the aggravation that's going on here right now. I believe that prices are going to rebound at some point in time here in the future. I'm also realistic in saying I'm not excited about what I see the inputs at and the kinds of costs that we have ranging from equipment to seed to fertilizer to everything that we go to do, fuel, the whole thing. Will fuel get better in the next 12 months? Probably. Will equipment prices go down? Not very much. Maybe the used will some. I don't look for a lot of change in the new. Seed prices have already been set for 25 and it would appear to me that they went up just a little bit. We're hearing more and more discussion about nutrients going up yet again. And guys, as we launch into our 12 days of nutrients here, and once again, we're going to go through the plant essential nutrients and take a deep dive into each one of those. And as I worked on one today, it really got me thinking about maybe it's time to do something different. As I study these nutrients and every year I I throw away my notes and I start over and I start looking at the interactions between how this nutrient affects that nutrient, how too much nitrogen can really mess things up and actually cut yield, how too much nitrogen creates a deficiency in other things, how not enough nitrogen, having too little nitrogen actually hurts us for getting phosphorus into the plant. When we don't get enough phosphorus into the plant, then we end up with not having enough copper and a couple of other micronutrients because they only go in with the phosphorus and the phosphorus only goes in when it's in the presence of the right ammonium in, not too much and not too little. And those are just a few of the examples that I look at as we start looking at these things. But guys, we have been looking in American agriculture typically at the big three. Everything we wanna do is through more nitrogen, more phosphorus, and more potassium. We have stuck our head in the sand. You know, it's astounding to me because we get all of the normal people, if you will, the accepted thing is, well, you have to put on N, P, and K, and especially you gotta take care of that phosphorus and that potassium, because if you don't put on phosphorus and potassium, you're gonna bleed your soil levels down. And all of a sudden, you're gonna wake up one day and you won't have enough, and that is true. But what I don't understand is why we know we have to replace phosphorus, why we know we have to replace potassium, and yet we think somehow we can ignore all of the secondaries and all of the micros. We can ignore calcium and ignore pH. We can ignore magnesium and the impact that it has on other things, especially on potassium. We can ignore sulfur, like somehow we're still getting the acid rain that we were getting back in the 80s, guys. The 80s are over, and we're not getting that acid rain anymore. And that means that sulfur and that boron that used to come for free have to be replaced somehow, some way. And all of a sudden, the fact that we're looking at the N, P, and K, and we know we have to put on the P and the K, 
or they'll bleed the levels down. And yet we've been farming some of these soils 150 or even 200 years or maybe more. And in 200 years, we have removed copper, manganese, zinc, iron, and yet we have never replaced any of those. We've never applied a drop of zinc. We have never applied one drop of copper. We've never applied one ounce of manganese. And yet somehow we think that we have sufficient amounts. Does it stand to reason that if we cannot skip putting back P and K, that also somewhere in the last 200 years, maybe we needed to replace some of those micronutrients and some of those secondaries? Guys, this is a very logical thing. Not logical is trying to ignore what Einstein said. Einstein said that the definition of insanity was to do exactly the same thing and hope for a different result. And I think it's time to give up hope as a method and embrace making a change. I'm not sure what change you want to make. We would love to work with you. Yeah, we're very upfront about that. But the fact of the matter is, I just want to encourage you to change something. Now, I am going to encourage you based upon a lot of conversations that I've had in the last three weeks because I've talked to several people who wanted to do something different and they went whole hog off on something that had no research behind it except that company's data. And those stories did not end well. And I really want you guys to talk about and think about fundamentals. What are the fundamentals that we have to do? Do I believe that bugs in a jug have a future? Yes, I do. Do I believe we have a lot to learn about them? Yes, I do. Do I believe that putting on bugs in a jug when my pH is 5.8 is a good idea? I absolutely do not. Why? Because most of these bugs in the jug that we're putting on are going to die almost instantaneously when we have that much of an acidic soil type. I'm not sure how the bugs in a jug are going to react. If you happen to be one of the people who are fighting with pHs of 7, 5, 7, 8, 8, 2 on that high side, which we know creates a whole nother bunch of problems. You know, problem number one being broadcast phosphorus gets tied up and never does become available. And so how are we going to farm around that? And guys, I just want to encourage you that it's time. Would we love to have you come to one of our fundamentals of agronomy? Yes, we would. We would love for the opportunity for the team to get a chance to meet you. We would love for you to set through a couple of days and just figure out what questions to ask. You come, you take a look, and maybe you never do anything at all with us, and that's okay. But you become empowered so that you can go and talk to your suppliers, your consultants, your agronomists, and you can start asking really good questions. Because guys, there is absolutely no reason that you shouldn't be able to ask, why am I doing this, and what am I going to get for a result? And if they get mad when you ask why, it's a giant red flag. And if the answer they give you is, well, because everyone does it, guys, there are certain communities where nearly everyone does methamphetamine. That does not make it a good idea. As a matter of fact, it makes it a terrible idea. And so what we need to be doing is looking for some alternatives, questioning the status quo. You guys know that I once heard status quo translated actually into English, and the phrase that they said was, the mess we're in. In other words, we're going to keep the status quo. We're just going to keep the mess that we're in. We're going to keep doing exactly what we're doing. And I want to encourage you, break out of the status quo. Do something different. Maybe it's change how you're doing your nitrogen. Maybe you'd start just looking at some ideas and not doing it exactly the same old way. Maybe it's that we say, maybe broadcast nutrients is easy, but easy isn't what I need. I need effective. I need return on investment. You guys know you've heard me talk that the agronomist from the University of Illinois said the average bushel in the state of Illinois of corn produced was $4.52. Guys, that is not sustainable. And what we've got to figure out is how are we going to grow that bushel of corn for less than four bucks right now? Because a lot of us are going to be taking, by the time we get rid of the basis, you know, we're going to be taking less than $4 for our corn. And we've got to come up with a production number that's under that. And we're going to have to do that by looking at how we do everything. I think that this year, everything is on the table. I think everything has to be set down and it has to be analyzed. We've got to be honest with ourselves and saying, am I paying too much money for cash rent? Have I got ground? I really don't want to give it up. 
I really don't want to farm less acres, but do I have ground that's losing me money and I'm banking on the future? I'm banking on $6 corn coming back really soon, so I'm willing to bleed equity on this farm so I can hang on to it in hopes that when corn comes back, I can get back what I've lost. And maybe I don't ever get back what I lost. Maybe I only get back part of it. And so the question becomes, what are we willing to look at? What are we willing to take a hard, objective look at, step back and remove the emotion and say, should I be cash renting everything I'm cash renting? Or do I have a piece that I'm in too deep on and I should let it go? And I should take the time that I spend farming that, trying to figure out how I could better manage. Maybe I'm farming 2,000 acres and I need to cut back and take a look at 1,600 and say, how do I take this 1,600 and make more money on it and cut loose the 400 that's losing me money, that I know is losing me money? And guys, I know a lot of what I'm saying today here is really controversial, that it's difficult. Maybe we need to take a look at what we're doing for tillage. Maybe we have been no-tilling forever, and I know that's a sacred cow to some people, but if we've been banding our fertilizer on top of the ground, maybe we need to take a look at what Marion Calmers has studied and proven beyond the shadow of a doubt, and we need to incorporate that somehow. Maybe we haven't been no-tilling and we've been doing recreational tractor driving and our equipment costs are high and our fuel costs are high and our erosion losses are hurting us. And we need to take a look at maybe we need to start no-tilling. And if we are no-tilling, maybe we need to say broadcast isn't the answer, row placement right in the seed trench or some kind of deep banding to get those nutrients down below the surface of the top of the ground there is something that we're gonna have to do. But guys, I just believe in my heart that it's time to question everything. Everything from the new equipment purchases to the rent, the whole deal. It's time to question the people that we have on our team. Is our seed salesman doing a really good job of selling us the right hybrids and matching those with the soil? Or is it just a friend of ours and we just go pick up some seed and he just says, do whatever you want to do. I'm all for having friends, guys, but no supplier of yours should be your friend to the point that he cost you money. Friends don't do that. Friends do not expect you to lose money in order to stay being their friend. That friend should bring something to the table. That relationship needs to be good for everybody, not just one person. It can't be unilateral, it has to be bilateral. And so I'm asking you guys to consider that. I'm asking you guys to take a look at your soil test. Are you getting a full test? NPK, micro, secondary, CEC, base saturations, pH, the whole shebang? Or are you just getting a test for NPK, which is honestly, guys, let's just be real here. What that's designed to do is sell you more nitrogen, more phosphorus, and more potassium. And I don't think that this is the year to be going out and just thinking I'm going to put on more and more and more. And I'm going to solve all of the problems that I have by doing that because that's back to doing the same old thing. And I don't think we're going to like the results that we get with that. And guys, I want you to question this. I want you to question your own personal development. What are you doing? What podcast are you listening to? Who are you talking to? Who are you listening to that's going to stretch your thinking? It's going to work on you to become a better you. And you say, that's kind of weird for farming. No, it's not. Because in nature, we're doing one of two things. We're either getting better or we're dying, but there is no staying the same. In all of nature, nothing stays static. Everything is improving or getting worse. That's it. Are you in the camp that's getting better? Are you in the camp that's improving? And let me say this, which brings me to, I get close to the end here. I think one of the most heartbreaking things is the number of calls that Karen gets, the number of texts that she receives, or the number of people that we say, we've listened to you for a year, for two years, for five years, but we really didn't think we were worthy. We literally had people say, we didn't think we were worthy of your time. Guys, that's heartbreaking. Our family, our team, we're just people like you. We got up this morning and went to church and we had the hanging of the greens service. You know, we spent some time with our kids and with our grandkids. And then we went and watched a a grandson play basketball. And then we drove to our next meeting site. And and we're we're just like you. Tomorrow on the farm, they're going to work the calves that we had for fall calvers. And it's time to vaccinate and do everything that's done with that. We're just out doing the same things that you guys do. Working hard every day. You know, up early, working late doing everything we can to make ourselves better and to make things better for you guys. You know, it was interesting. We had a chance to sit around today with Nick and Karen and 
Sheila and Kayla and just talk about some of the things that we think we can do to improve this, to make it better, to make it go faster, to reach more people. But here's what I want to tell you. I want you to go pick up the phone and I want you to text 641-919-5570 and Karen will put someone in touch with you. And I don't care what your situation is, we want to talk to you. I know there are people out here who are doing great and they're flourishing and they're doing fantastic things. I know there's some other people who are wondering what 2025 looks like. They're really questioning what it's going to look like. Maybe it's time. Pick up the phone, reach out, and let's talk about some things maybe that we could do different, that we could make a difference. Guys, I want to encourage you. Go to Facebook and go in and dig into those 12 days of nutrients. We've been doing them every year for, I don't know, five, six, seven years, long time. And you can go through them one by one. I talked to a brand new guy in Sioux Falls last week and he's like, I've just went through and listened to all of 22 and now I'm working on 23. Because guys, knowledge is power and that's only half true. Knowledge is only power if it is applied. The fact that we don't apply what we know makes it absolutely worthless. Maybe one of the things you should look at, and it's interesting to me, we get people that want to argue over soybean populations. Guys, there's no reason to get on social media and holler at each other and say, I believe it's 185, I think it's 155. That's what we always plant. Do the test, do it yourself. It's an easy test to run. Start at 85,000, increase by 10,000 at a time, run it all the way up to 165 or 175, and just look at the results. But after you look at the results, guys, act on it. I'll close with this story. I had a grower, it was a father and a son, and they'd been planting 185, 185,000 soybeans in 30 inch rows forever and ever. And you know, a lot of us who are older, we're old school and far enough back, we were using bin run beans and you had to put a lot of them out there because they didn't germ very well. And so we were using way too many. And over the course of time that has changed. And so this father-son ran the population test and the son called and he said, hey, Rod, he said, you were right on our farm, the highest yield, not that it was also the biggest money maker, but it was the highest yield, the absolute highest yield was 125,000 population. And he said, so guess what dad's decided to do? And I said, plant 125,000. He said, no, dad's decided we're gonna back up from 185 to 165. Guys, that knowledge, had no power. That wasn't me telling them. That was their own test. They ran multiple times. Guys, I just want to encourage you, put it all on the table. Look at everything. Planning population, hybrid staff. Who have I got helping me? Who have I got working for me? Who's on my team? Who are my consultants? Who am I listening to? Who are my friends that are inside my ear? And are they making it? Or are they, we all just doing the same thing because we just sit around and do the same thing over and over again and tell ourselves it's going to be okay? I don't have all the answers, guys. But I believe strongly that before we find the answers, we've got to ask the right questions. It's really important to get that question right. And so I believe that knowledge is power. I believe that you are worthy. I believe that we can get through this. And I believe that some of you are out there and you're listening to this and you've been thinking about picking up that phone and texting Karen, or you've been thinking about going to Facebook and sending that message, or you've been thinking about going to a betterwaytofarm.com and filling out that profit calculator and getting someone to contact you. It's time. Do it today. Pull over and do it right now. 641-919-5570. And let us figure out which of the next few fundamentals of agronomy we can see you at because we really want to meet you there. Guys, I say this with all the respect that I can. We appreciate you. We appreciate our audience so much. We would really like the chance to talk to you to see if we can come up with something that's mutually beneficial because in today's environment, that's the word of the day, mutually beneficial. Thank you guys very much for listening. And as always, we hope you're having a better day.